You were saying some nice things about me when I was out in the hall. You want to do that introduction again? <laughs> just like <laughs> I didn't catch all that. Could you just repeat it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm an affirmation junkie. My wife says, when will it ever be enough for you? And I say, it'll never be enough for me. Not until I hear, well done. Then, I'll, then I think I'll be done. That should just about be enough, I think. Yeah, there's a, there's a chip in my cup, and it leaks, it leaks all out. And we're going to look at uh, lament, uh, lament literature. Um, the biggest worship book in the Bible, which is the Psalter, uh, numerically the biggest category of worship songs in the Bible are laments. And yet uh, our worship music doesn't really reflect that very well. Um, although in other cultures I think it, it has been reflected well, primarily in the African American church, the, the Negro spirituals reflect a, a whole cu culture of lament that we've lost sight of as well. And one of my concerns is, is the African American church is losing sight of those as well too. So can't, we'll, we'll look at this from all different perspectives. But, but I was, I was uh, discipled in, uh, in two African American churches and, and, and had the benefit of, of uh, most of this, or a lot of this came from, from my church experience there. So. Um, so let me give you a, f a framework. Uh, let's start with a framework. And let's, let's think of the Bible as a journey. Let's see, this will do a little better. Think of the Bible as a journey. Yeah, that's good. From Genesis to Revelation, right? The Bible's going somewhere. I don't know about you, but th that's a cool idea for me. Sometimes I feel like I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Psalm 1 to Psalm 150. Um, the Bible begins with uh, Torah, right? With law. And this is the equation. If I'm obedient, God will bless me. If I'm disobedient, God will punish me. Okay? That's the Torah. And that's a good thing. The law is a good thing. I mean, God gave us the law. There's sort of some anti law people in the American Christian church and that's unfortunate because God would not give us something that wasn't good so this is a good thing but the important thing I think to realize is this is where we start this is where the journey starts God is taking us somewhere okay that's the important idea we're going somewhere uh, we're going from what I call uh, uh, Torah obedience or yeah let's just call it Torah obedience to intimacy and this is the deepest desire of God's heart and I've got news for you he gets what he wants <laughs> the deepest desire of God's heart is to be with us what's the law for ultimately what's the law for Leviticus 26 12 what do you get if you keep the law God says I'll walk with you and be your God and you'll be my people intimacy. What's the tabernacle for? So God can be with his people. What's the temple for? Same thing. What was the incarnation for? What do we call him? Emmanuel, God with us. The deepest desire of God is to be with us. Practically the last words from his lips were, behold, I'm with you always. Okay. What's the climax of Revelation, uh, Revelation 21? And I heard a loud voice from the throne say, At last the dwelling of God is with men and women, and he will live with them and be their God, and they will be his people. Okay? So that's the deepest desire of God. So we start with, with Torah, and we end with, or we're going towards intimacy. Torah. Um, I have four kids. My oldest uh, daughter is Kate, and she's 20. She's, she's a dancer, gorgeous, very poised and just you know I can't believe she's mine uh, when Katie was little uh, she cleaned up her room I say hey I'll, I'll give you some M&Ms if you don't clean up your room I'm gonna whack you okay? <laughs> that's Torah obedience if you're obedient I'm gonna bless you if you're disobedient 
I'm going to punish you. And that's where our relationship began, and that's a good thing. And when she comes home, but it's, it's a relationship that's growing towards intimacy. Now, she's 20 years old now, college student. If she were to come home now and I were to say, okay, honey, you clean up your room, daddy's going to give you an M&M. But if you don't, daddy's going to spank. That would be kind of sick, wouldn't it? <laughs> right? Why would that be sick? Why would that feel so icky? It's because we're on a journey together. See? Same thing with the Lord. We're going somewhere towards intimacy. And that's the point. She's beginning to understand that I'm not just the M&M man. Right? And unfortunately, we get stuck here with God. We think he's the person that gives us good stuff when we're obedient and gives us and whacks us when we're bad. And on almost every page of the Old Testament, I hear God say, how could you think that this is all I am? Because he's constantly inviting. I mean, Moses, Abraham, I mean, name anybody in, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament that he interacts with. He's always leading them towards an intimacy with God. Job is a perfect example. Let's do Job. Um, Job 1. Job is a Torah guy. Right? He offers sacrifices for sins his children might have committed. I mean, he's got this down, and it had worked for him really well until chapter 2. And then the issue happens. Even though he's obedient, he thinks he's being punished. And Job, this is, a, this is not good. We'll look at Psalm 73 in a minute. Same issue. Hey, I don't get it. The disobedient people are prospering, and the obedient people are being punished. Lord, we have a problem, right? We have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Lord, we have a problem. So, um, so Job 1 begins with, uh, with that. What, but what is it, 43 chapters in Job? I have a, my, my mind cannot remember how many chapters are on Job ever. But anyway, at the end of the book, what do we have? We have Job saying, you know, my ears had heard about you, but now my eyes see you. Job has an intimacy with God that he could have never dreamed possible. Because for all he knew, what happens in the Old Testament if you see God? You die. You die. And he asks for all along something that he knows may kill him. He asks for God to show up. And lo and behold, God does. And he goes, man, I, you know, I'd heard about you, but now my eyes see you because he's Job is on this journey okay same thing Genesis we start with Torah Revelation 21 at last God is dwelling with his people wipe away every tear see an intimacy with God that he describes as marriage I mean God loves us so much he wants to be married to us that's pretty that's intimacy now let's, okay so let, let's let's uh, so so first of all we got this out of a idea of a journey and let's look at a couple more categories, and then we're going to look at some psalms. And all I'm going to do is give you sort of a, a grid, sort of a framework, so that you can go back and look at these psalms. And, and you see if this is true or not. Don't, what, please don't believe me. Please don't just take it from me. Um, let it simmer on the back burner of your mind and see if this is true or not. Second category uh, comes from the journey. Okay, here's the beginning of the journey. Here's the end of the journey. What's most of the middle? Most of the middle of the journey is wilderness. It's wilderness, okay? Wilderness, lament. Um, and I want to make this claim. There's, um, well, let's, hold on. Let me, I know nobody can read this. This writing on the board is really for me. Um, let me just make a claim. There is no true worship without wilderness. All worship, <clears throat> all worship begins in the wilderness. So let's, let's look at that for just a second. In Exodus 7, one of the last things that God says to, uh, to Pharaoh through Moses is, let my people go so that they can worship me in the wilderness. 